Hello everyone, welcome back. It's April 21st, 2021. We're out here um, surveying the wintry landscape out in the yard and the orchard and gardens. Today's video is going to be all about how to estimate and it's really just an estimation. That's the thing I want to put up, um, put right out there in the front. Estimate the damage that this can do to your fruit buds and it's going to be based on that chart by MSU that you've probably seen if you're into fruit tree growing. And that chart essentially summarizes all of the different types of uh, major types of fruit crops and the stages of bud development and the temperatures at which those different stages of bud development are damaged. So that'll make sense in a minute when we look at it. Um, and that'll allow you to make some informed decisions because if you're well above your 90% bud kill, it's probably not worth covering your trees. If you're going to be flirting with that 90% bud kill, it might be worth it. Um, you'll see we have this kind of styrofoam looking snow falling right now. Um, it's about 30 degrees out here. Last night it got down to 29. It doesn't appear to have really hurt any of our buds that you're going to see in a minute. Um, but tonight it's it might get down to 25, 26, so we'll see how it goes. We're not able to take any measures today because we're going to have 20 mile an hour winds tonight. So if, you, if I put those teepees up, like you might see, I did that last year, um, they'll just get destroyed. So we're going to have to hope that Mother Nature comes through for us. So let's jump into the orchard and then we'll um, take a look at these buds. This was filmed yesterday, what you're going to see next. Okay, so we're out in the orchard and what we're going to do is just basically look at these trees and match up where the buds are on the tree with what you see on the chart. So this is the kids orange red and I have this on my cell phone, it's easiest. Um, and so you know it's not full pink, it's probably either first pink. That one I would say is probably first pink is the closest. Now mother nature doesn't work in nice little uh, nice little uh, easy stages. That one I would say is more tight cluster can see there. So I'd say that's tight cluster. So all of your buds are not going to be the same. Look, here's another tight cluster for sure. You can see that there, the comparison. Uh, so some are first pink. I'd say that might be first pink. But again, you know, it's not like it's just going to jump from one to the other immediately. There's a transition period there. This is tight cluster, I would say. Again, you just sort of look, maybe first pink, tight cluster. This is probably more tight cluster. So that means, you know, if you look at the, where are the preponderance of buds on this tree, somewhere between tight cluster and first pink. And we're looking at, as I mentioned, that bottom number. The difference is 21 and 24. Our forecast is 25. So the tight cluster should be fine. First pink will be dicey. But most of these a tight cluster, see? So our critical temperature is 21. So th this this tree should be okay. Uh, let's take a look at, that's the kid's orange, let's take a look at the golden russet, which is a little bit further along. So here is, and I can zoom in a little bit more, this is good. Um, so here we're trying to match up. It's going to be one of these two. I'd say that's first pink. It's definitely not when you, you know, scroll ahead. It's definitely not full pink where they're separated. You can see the buds are separated. These are still in a cluster, um, but they're showing a lot of pink. So I would say first pink. So this, this one, the critical temperature is 24 on that one. Keep in mind that most sources say that if you... Um, have 10% of your buds, you'll still get a full crop. I mean, if you just look at, for example, this little cluster here, there's there's a one, let me get there. So if you look at this little cluster there, there's one, two, three, four, five, there's like six buds in there. So for every two of those, that's 12 buds, if you have one that survives, you'll have an apple between those two, an apple between these two, an apple there, and you can just sort of do the math. You'll you'll end up on this tree, a tree this size with 10% of your buds, still going to end up with like 50 apples on that tree, even if you lose 90% of them. Here's just a quick little other issue, and that's 
variety. So this is a Northern Spy. And look at this one, it is barely even waking up. This is always a really late one to wake up. So if this were fruiting age, which I'm not even sure if it is, I don't think it is, I don't see any fruit buds on it, but you can see it's just waking up. You wouldn't have any issue with this one. The other tree like that is Quart Pendu Plat here. So this one you can also see is just waking up. This one has the nickname the Wise Apple because it knows to stay asleep. So when that's to fruiting age, now that would be totally fine. Here's our Colville Blanc. Again, I'm thinking that's Thinking that's first pink right there. Just moving that so my phone doesn't, um, this phone screen doesn't go. But but look here, this is still tight. See, it's all bunched up in there. That would I'd say that's tight cluster right there. Let's see if I can get both of them in the shot. That's definitely tight cluster. You know, if you could work backwards as well, just like you can work forwards. It's definitely not um, half-inch green, so none of my apples are. They're going to be one of these two. I'd say that particular bunch is tight cluster, which, you know, 21 degrees is your 90% kill there, so that buys you some leeway. Here's a Pitmaston pineapple. Another really late to wake up. Look at, look at that. It's just starting to wake up, so when... In other words, this is one of the reasons why you want to grow a bunch of different varieties that are late, early, um, that kind of thing, because whereas all these other trees are leafing out, the Northern Spy, the Pitmaston Pineapple, and the Quart Pendu Plat are barely waking up. And so if these were a fruiting age, their buds would be totally protected. You wouldn't have to worry at all. And so variety does play a role. I think the cherries... We might be in some trouble. This is these are sweet cherries. And so you want to kind of figure out, you know, where we are here um, based on the bloom. And here, as you can see, is not really full bloom. That's full bloom. So you work backwards. Uh Somewhere between kind of first white and first bloom. I'd say first bloom on that. Looks the most like it. So 25 degrees is our 90% kill. So these are going to be iffy. Although some of them up higher are not quite as developed. And so the, the next drop down is uh, 24 degrees. Not a huge difference. But... These might, we might get something on these. That's the Rainier. Here's our plum. Uh, so the plum, interestingly enough, if I go on to our list and we look at plums. Now this is European plum, this is a Santa Rosa. I'm assuming they're similar. There's no American plum. Um, these are definitely post bloom, full bloom, somewhere in there. But look at our 90% kill is 23 degrees. That's really surprising for a post-bloom, 23 degrees. And so those should be fine. We're going to lose some, but we're not going to get down to 23, hopefully. That's our Santa Rosa plum. Let's take a look at our Bartlett pear. So we're just going to do the same thing. I find the appropriate part of the chart, and then we're going to just compare what we have here. So here's our pears. You just sort of go into your in the right neighborhood. And that's why it's handy to have this on your cell phone where you can do this, carry it around outside very easily. And so here's our pear buds, and we sort of want to match them up. Um, they're not, they're a little bit more separated than a tight cluster, as you can see there. But they're not really to the first white, That they're very separated in white. Um, these pear blossoms will start off looking like they're going to be pink, but then they open and they're white. And so, tight cluster, first white, I'd say it's in between those two. And look at the temperatures, 15 and 19, even if it's first white, 
the critical temperature is 19 for a 90% kill. We might lose a few buds on here. 10% kill, 25 degrees. Um, but just as an example, that bunch you're looking at right there, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's like eight of them in there. So a 10% kill means we'd still have seven of eight buds roughly in there. So th this, this we should hopefully get a Bartlett pear for the first time. That's exciting. It is cold out here, let me tell you. My hands are almost frozen just walking around out here. Um, the, the wind is really cold. So here is our peach. And so we're gonna go, we're, we're, some, we're nowhere near first bloom. Um, this, what's nice about this is this is called a frost peach and it flowers really late. That's why it's called frost peach. So we're gonna be somewhere in the calyx red to first pink phase, but look at the critical temperatures on that, nine and 15. So we're gonna be nowhere near the 90% kill, but for fun, let's just take a look anyway. I'll zoom in a little bit on my phone. So we're gonna be looking at one of these two. You know, so I would say first pink. Again, the next stage up from first pink is first bloom. There's no blooms on this tree anywhere. So those there are definitely first pink. They're not calyx red. That's un more undeveloped. There are a few. Let's see if I can find a calyx red on here. They've developed a little, that, that right there looks kind of like the one right here looks like a calyx red. Whereas these are kind of first pink. But look, first pink, 25 degrees is only 10% kill. And look how many buds are on this tree. This tree, the entire tree is just full of buds. So if we lost 10% of these, you wouldn't even notice. We'll take a look at our pawpaw. And there's really no data on these. You really can't find much on these in terms of their cold hardiness. What's cool about the pawpaw though, and I've read this and, I, and I'm seeing it in action, is these are more developed. And I'm going to do a little bit of a sort of a science experiment here. I'm just going to see what happens with these because we're going to have 25 mile an hour winds. There's really no way that I could cover these. But you see here, look at these flower buds that are way less developed than these. A lot of people will say that pawpaws will flower over the course of about a month. So these will open and then later these will open. And so the pawpaw kind of has a built-in defense for this. Um, if these get killed by the cold, the later buds will come on. And so there's two shots, or maybe many shots, but we'll see if that's true. I'm not sure about these. So th thank you for watching our video. Uh, just to remember, a lot of these things are estimates. Yes, they're based on science and experimentation and observations, but nature doesn't always follow a nice, clean, neat script. And so um, your 90% bud kill may be a degree or two different. It depends on your, as we mentioned, the kind of tree, um, whether it's apple, peach, pear, of course, but also varieties. There are certain varieties that are just tougher, even within apples or peaches or pears or what have you. So don't despair, as long as you have 10 to 15% of your buds on your trees for large fruit, not cherries, but large fruit, you're gonna get a full crop or at least close to it. And if you weren't obsessive like most of us are, you probably would never notice the difference with 90% bud kill. Um, come midsummer, you're gonna be loaded with apples and peaches and pears anyway. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy our content, please subscribe for more updates from the garden and the orchard.